This video looks at the next step in solving the travelling salesperson problem. In the first lesson we looked at using the nearest neighbour algorithm to find an upper bound. It was suggested that we might be able to improve on this upper bound and part of that process is to look for a lower bound. In this video we will go over an algorithm to find such a lower bound. This is the method. We choose a starting node or in the question you may be given one. We delete that node and all of the arcs that go to it. We then find the length of the minimum connector for what's left of the graph and we add the weights of the two least arcs that go to the deleted node. This then gives us our lower bound. We're using the correct number of arcs for a Hamiltonian cycle and because a Hamiltonian cycle will always have two arcs to each node this is giving us the least possible weight. It is highly unlikely that this will actually find a Hamiltonian cycle. It's just giving us an indication of a value that can't be beaten. So we'll work through this example. We're going to delete node A and all the arcs that go from A. So all four of these arcs will be deleted along with the node. The next step is to find the minimum connector for what's left. So we can see there using Kruskal's, we choose the two first the four second and then the one of the fives that doesn't create a cycle. So we have a minimum connector of 11. And then we add the two smallest, well you can just faintly see them here, the two smallest of the two and the three. So that gives us a total lower bound of 16. We could do the same thing deleting node B and the arcs that go from there. Like so. Find the minimum connector. And add the two smallest arcs. You can see quite clearly here that this isn't a Hamiltonian cycle. We only have one arc going in here, we have three going in here. As I said before, the idea is to use the correct number of arcs and they're the smallest possible. We know we're going to have two arcs going into B and these are the two smallest ones. We know we have to connect all of the other nodes to B so this is the smallest possible value of arcs to do that. So we know that we can't beat 16. And our Hamiltonian cycle will have two arcs going into every node. So now we delete C and all the arcs there and see what happens. Minimum connector of just 10 but this time the two smallest are slightly bigger so again we come in at 16. If we delete D minimum connector of 10 again and the two smallest again takes us to 16 and then finally delete E This time, much smaller minimum connector, but the arts going into E have got a bigger weight. So we add 10 and we get a lower bound of 17. We can see there that deleting different vertices gives us these lower bounds. The best of these is actually the highest.
so we take that as our lower bound. The reason that's the best is we know we can't beat any of these. We can't do better than 16 or 17. So the 17 gives us the best information. It tells us that 17 can't be beaten. And we know that because we have to have two arcs to each of these vertices and we have to connect the other vertices. So by finding this minimum connector and the two cheapest arcs to each vertex, we are finding the minimum possible weight of arcs that could make a Hamiltonian cycle. We would then compare that with the nearest neighbour solution to the problem where we would have an upper and a lower bound. But we'll look at that in more detail in the lesson.